Hey guys and welcome to the first part of these videos where I'll be showing you particular techniques to solving show that questions for projectile motion. So in general you'll be given a question which gives you some information about the motion of a particle that's been projected and what you need to do is use one or more of the SUVAT equations that we've learned either in the horizontal, vertical or both directions in order to prove an equation that can only be satisfied by considering the motion of the particle at a particular point along its trajectory. So let's have a look at this question. A boy throws a ball at a target. At the instant when the ball leaves the boy's hand at the point A, the ball is two meters above horizontal ground and is moving with speed u meters per second at an angle alpha above the horizontal. In the subsequent motion, the highest point reached by the ball is 3 meters above the ground. The target is modelled as being the point T as shown in the diagram. The ball is modelled as a particle moving freely under gravity. Using the model, show that u squared is equal to 2g over sine squared alpha. So here we have a diagram which best illustrates the scenario. So we've got a ball that's been modelled as a particle and is thrown from the point A towards the target t with a speed of u meters per second at an angle of alpha to the horizontal. We can see that the initial point of projection a is two meters above the ground and the highest point reached by the ball above the ground is three meters. As a standard thing we do in projectile questions to give us an easier way to work with the vectors, let's split this vector u meters per second into two components its horizontal and vertical component the horizontal component of initial velocity is u cosine alpha because it contains the angle and the vertical component would be u sine of alpha because it doesn't contain the angle we also have the acceleration acting downwards due to gravity of g meters per second per second now the reason why we've chosen the constant g as opposed to 10 or 9.81 for instance is because we can see that there's a g in the equation that we're trying to prove okay now looking here we've been asked to prove an equation which is in terms of sine alpha now seeing that the term sine alpha is used as part of a vertical component of initial velocity well it makes sense to consider the vertical motion and therefore resolve the vectors vertically so now that we're resolving vertically, we need to build up a SUVAT equation that we'll use to help to prove this equation. Now, in order to find values for these quantities, we need to choose a specific point along this trajectory to model. Now, the point I'm going to choose is here, and I'm going to call this point P, which is the highest point reached by the ball that's three meters above the ground. Now in these questions, you may or may not be given information about which point in the path that you need to choose in order to prove the given equation. But if you're not told which point in the path to choose, then I strongly suggest that you choose a point in the path where you think you'll be able to find the most information for your SUVAT equations. So let's see what happens when we consider the vertical motion of this particle at P, where we take upwards to be positive and downwards to be negative. So what's S, the vertical displacement? Well, since the point P is three meters above the ground and the initial point of projection A is two meters above the ground, well, the vertical displacement is simply the vertical distance between the point A and the point P, which is equal to three minus two, which is equal to one meter. Another way you could look at this is that if you imagine the initial point of projection to be the origin of an x, y axis, then what's the y coordinate of the point in question? Okay. And hopefully you can see that relative to the origin, the y coordinate of P would be one. Okay. From the diagram, we can see that u, the initial velocity in the vertical sense is equal to big U sine alpha. Now, since we've chosen to model the particle at the point P, which is the highest point reached by the ball above the ground, then it follows that 
v the final velocity is equal to zero and since we've chosen upwards to be positive our acceleration due to gravity would be equal to negative g meters per second per second okay so by considering the vertical motion of the particle at the point p we were able to find a term for each of these four vectors which we can use in the equation v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as in order to try to prove this equation. So subbing these terms into equation 1, we're going to get that 0 squared is equal to u sine of alpha all squared plus 2 times negative g times 1. Expanding the brackets, we get that 0 is equal to u squared sine squared alpha minus 2g. And if we add 2g to both sides, we get that 2g is equal to u squared sine squared alpha. And dividing both sides by sine squared alpha, we get that u squared is equal to 2g over sine squared alpha, which proves our result. Okay, so hopefully you could see that inspecting terms in the equation gives you a good idea of which direction of motion to consider. And choosing the right point in the path was really important for helping us prove the equation. Now, some of you may have been thinking, well, why didn't we choose a different point along the path, say T, for example? Now, had you chosen the point T, you would have seen that we've not been given enough information in the question to work out the vertical displacement at this point. And we also don't know the final velocity at this point. OK, so we wouldn't have had enough information to prove the equation. Now, if we had chosen to consider the vertical motion of the particle at the point A, when the particle is initially projected, if we build a system of SUVAT equations, well, we'll get that S, the vertical displacement, is equal to zero, because of course, at this point, the particle hasn't traveled anywhere. U, the initial velocity, would remain as big U sine alpha. Now, what's interesting is that the final velocity would also be equal to the initial velocity. Now, another way to think about this is what's the value of v, the final velocity, when the time t is equal to zero. And this will always be equal to the initial velocity, which in this case is u sine alpha. And this result is also consistent with these SUVA equations we have here. So when t is equal to zero, we see that v is equal to u. And when s is equal to zero, which we said was the displacement at the initial point of projection, where we get the v squared is equal to u squared. So v must be equal to u okay now considering the fact that a would remain as negative g meters per second per second if we sub these terms into equation one we would get v squared is equal to u squared and therefore that u squared sine squared alpha is equal to u squared sine squared alpha and although this is true it doesn't help to prove our equation okay so as i mentioned you want to try and choose a point along the trajectory that you think will help you to prove the given equation. However, don't be afraid to try different points along the trajectory and then come to the right result because either ways it will help to improve your understanding of projectiles and working with SUVAT equations, okay? So, hope that was useful for you. Join me for the next tutorial where we'll be going through some more show that questions for projectiles. Until then, Keep up the good work and I'll see you soon. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.